Shalom and greetings in the name of Yahweh, the only name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Therefore, I pledge allegiance to Yahweh Almighty, who has blessed the Constitutional Republic of the United States, and to that republic for which those gorgeous red, white, and blue stars and stripes stand, one nation under our only God, Yahweh, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Well, it does sound a little bit different, as I say so many times. I've put our Pledge of Allegiance in its proper perspective. This is not any disrespect to my nation or to my flag. This gives honor to the one who gave us breath, the only one God that ever existed, the only one Savior, the only one first and last, the only one King of Israel and King of our hearts, if so be, that we allow it. We um, started a subject... Oh, by the way, Psalm 33 and 12 for this nation. I encourage you to read out Psalm 33 and 12 from the complete Jewish Bible. How blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people he chose as his heritage. Now we know that Yahweh chose Israel, the pupil of his eye, as his heritage. However, any nation that would claim Yahweh as their sole Savior, God, Redeemer, first and last, as the prophets have declared, the only one who Zechariah chapter 14, 1 through 5 states that his feet will return to Mount Olives. You know, it says Yahweh's feet will return to Mount Olives. It certainly does. In your KJV, you'll find an uppercase Lord. And that uppercase Lord should have read Yahweh. This is Zechariah 14, 1 through 5. Check me out. In your complete Jewish or Israeli type Bibles, Hebrew Bibles, you'll find that uppercase word Adonai. And in some of the other um, Tanakhs, you will find that um, it might have uppercase Hashem. Nevertheless, Zechariah did not lie. In the Hebrew, you'll find the characters that spell Yahweh's name, yod heh wal -Hey. And it says, Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh, the people he chose as his heritage. Your KJV reads, Blessed is the nation whose God is Yahweh. You'll find an uppercase L-O-R-D. And the people whom he has chosen for his own inheritance. Yep. If you choose to serve the one God, Yahweh, you are his inheritance. You become part and grafted in with the real, true olive tree. Yes, this is the first commandment. The first commandment should read, I am Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, where you lived as slaves. You are to have no other gods before me. That's from the complete Jewish Bible. Your KJV reads, I am Yahweh, your God, not Lord, which brought you out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Thou shalt have none other gods before me. None. So if you choose... To have no other gods, no other saviors, no other first and last, no other redeemer but the almighty Yahweh, then you will be his chosen as well. Yes, you will. And well, there are some verses I found. There's a lot of verses where the stranger, um, they didn't pay somebody to convert, by the way. The stranger just denounced their idols. And they turn to worship with all of their mind, soul, body, spirit, the one true God, Yahweh. That's what converted them. They didn't have to pay somebody to do that. That's a money-making racket. All right, let's go back to treason. <laughs> that sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? It's really not funny. Treason is not funny. Uh, we did part one of treason. Now I want to do part 
two of treason. You know, this word um, treason, just to kind of give you a brief um, summary of what we talked about in part one, treason in the Hebrew is kesher. And uh, y'all forgive me, you Hebrew scholars, if I speak like a kindergartner, um, I'm close. <laughs> Uh, but I want to know Yahweh's word from his perspective, from the Hebrew perspective, and not a Western perspective or a foreign Eastern perspective that does not know Yahweh as Elohim. All right, getting back to uh, Kesher, treason. It means conspiracy. It repeats treason, and it means an unlawful and unlawful, unlawful alliance it has a root word and the root word is kashar kashar and it means to bind tie bind it together league together conspire together to bind gets into confine it gets into league again uh, it's kind of repetitious with these same words and it gets into bind fast uh, to bind oneself vigorously to conspire against. So we find the word treason, as we said in the first program, you find it only about three times in your KJV. And um, it's several other times in, um, in the complete Jewish Bible. And we read about those that committed treason against a leader of Israel. But really, if the leader of Israel was in right standing with Yahweh Almighty, their treasonous acts against that leader were really not against that leader, but against Yahweh's word, against Yahweh Almighty, the laws that he established for Israel. Remember, treason is an unlawful act of conspiracy. What law? Well, from what I know, Israel... The laws of Israel as a nation are basically established from the laws of Yahweh, given in the first blood covenant. And if you want to come to this nation, which I'm persuaded that the nation of the United States is really just an extension of Israel, and I'll explain that in a minute. Uh, I believe this nation of the United States, when the 13 colonies were established, I believe it was an extension of of Israel. And why do I say that? Because um, Israel was made up of the 12 tribes. And remember, 10 tribes went north, but the other two stayed in Jerusalem. The 10 tribes became Israel, and then we had Ju Judah or Yehuda in, uh, that stayed behind. And of course, we know the Levitical priesthood, they, um, they were kind of scattered. They didn't really have their own. They were, their inheritance was Yahweh. And we know that the that groups of people are made up of just that, human beings, flesh and bone. And flesh and bone sometimes just doesn't do right. Flesh and blood has its own will. And Yahweh created us that way, that we can choose to do His will or our will. That's why we pray, not my will be done, but your will be done in me, Yahweh Almighty. And it's a wrestling against the flesh and the spirit. And if we're a yielded vessel, we will be yielded unto the Holy Spirit of Yahweh. But if we become hardened in our own heart, in our own spirit because of the cares of this life. And we become proud and boisterous and think we're something when we're nothing. Yahweh Almighty knows how to put the fire to us. And fire does what? It burns. But if you're a vessel, and you know sometimes vessels made of gold, there are different vessels made out of different materials. I want to be a vessel made of gold. I want to be a vessel made of silver. I want to be a vessel that is precious. 
in the eyes of the Almighty. And if there's a flaw in my vessel, I want him to smash that flaw. Fire purifies. Fire, well, if you've ever heard about the, the silversmith, the story about the silversmith, he used fire to purify silver. And he was asked the question, he said, and you know, Yahweh Almighty is the silversmith that purifies us in the fire. And the silversmith was asked the question, how do you know when that silver is finished? And he said, when I can see myself. So I want Yahweh to see himself in me, in all my fleshly faults and failures. I don't want to make excuse for transgression. And this is real integrity. Even though we're all flesh, we do not willfully sin. Now, if you give yourself over to your flesh more than the spirit of Yahweh, you can expect to be more flesh than spirit. And that flesh is enmity against the Almighty. I don't know how I got off on that. That might be treason against Yahweh. You think? You conspire with yourself. Well, we don't have to do that anymore. We don't have to obey that verse. We can do what we want to. You sure can. you got a free will. You can do anything that you want to. Ladies, since this is a women's program, I'm an aged woman teaching the younger to be a keeper of your household. And it's more than just cooking and cleaning. That word keep in the Hebrew means to guard. Number one, you got to guard your own soul from transgression. Number two, you are in charge of your children to teach them the fear and admonition of Yahweh Almighty. You don't teach them your ways. You teach them Yahweh's ways. Maybe you don't know this truth. Maybe you just think, oh, he's a God called by many names. You don't find that in scripture. He's a God of many attributes, but not many names. So we can really be treasonous in the spirit, can we not? I heard a young man, and I listen to this man quite often. Maybe some of you know him. Uh, he's from Israel. He's an IDF soldier. He works, he's um, pretty much kind of a reservist. And his name is Jair Pinto. He's a fine young man. There's a lot of fine people in Israel. And this young man made a statement that really stuck out to me. He said, of course, he said God brought Israel out of Egypt. But the people need to get Egypt out of themselves. And I thought, wow, now I'm, I might be missing a few words here and there. Um, but I feel like people need honorable mention. Uh, if, you're, if you want to listen to um, somebody that's got really wonderful things to say that's scripturally based, um, listen to Yair Pinto. That's Y-A-I-R Pinto, P-I-N-T-O. And he's, um, he's a reservist for the IDF in Israel. They won't cost you nothing. Back to treason. But I thought that was a, that stuck with me. And it's so true with not just Israel. Look, Yahweh spoke to Abraham and told him he would be the father of many nations. Again, I think I ran a rabbit trail and got off track here. I wanted to explain to you why I thought the 13 colonies. Remember when the, uh, the 12, uh, 10 tribes went north and the other two stayed in Jerusalem? Okay, well, we know that, uh, that the 13 colonies here in the United States were a branch of England <clears throat> or Great Britain, which were some of those 10 tribes that went north. And we came over here to get out from under the uh, rule of monarchs. Uh, we came here and rebelled against their taxation. We came here for religious freedom. And the Redcoats kept coming, and we know the rest of our story for the United States and the 13 colonies. Nevertheless, how I know that this nation was derived from Israel is because a lot of our laws were established from the law of Yahweh. And uh, they're surrounded by them. And even some of our governors. You know the verse in, um, in Jeremiah chapter 10 where it says, Learn not the way of the heathen. 
and then it goes in for they cut down a tree in the wood in the woods and they and they deck it with silver and gold well that's a pagan christmas tree it sure is and Yahweh told them don't learn their ways don't learn the way of the heathen well who's a heathen i know that sounds like a bad word but it really means the nations Yahweh told israel don't learn the way of the nations for they do this and they do that and uh, they worship that tree is what they did in the original and did you know that when the 13 colonies were established that it was against the law to celebrate christmas and to have a christmas tree oh but the red coats kept coming they sure did oh there's nothing wrong with that we can do that we can do anything we want you surely can it was a pagan day that was not to be honored they cut a tree out of a out of the woods they deck it with silver and gold. They make a god out of it. You know the best gifts that anyone can have are not the pagan Christmas gifts. No. They're the gifts of self-sacrifice doing for somebody else. To do for somebody else. Not always yourself. Think about this. Think about it gifts what's a gift something you might might be tangible it might be intangible nevertheless it was, it was against the law to celebrate christmas when the 13 colonies were established not only that it, i mean not only against laws punishable with a fine and or put in jail for celebrating christmas but again the red coats kept coming and you can do anything you want to you surely can there are a lot of practices in this nation. They might look beautiful, but what's the root of it? You know, the nicest gifts are the ones that you don't expect. Like going to do something for somebody who's unable to do for themselves. Think about it. Treason. Talking about the word treason. All right, I haven't even started reading. <laughs> We're in part two, another act of treason. My goodness, I'm 17 minutes in this and haven't even started part two. Let's go. Here we go. Part two, treason. All right, I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible. I'm reading out of 2 Kings chapter 11, verse 1. When Ataliah, or some say Athaliah, the mother of ah ah Ahaziah, saw that her son was dead, she set about destroying the entire royal family. Okay, Atalia or Athaliah, she was a wicked woman. Really wicked woman. And she was going to make people do what she wanted them to do. Why? She didn't serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. She surely didn't. And it goes on to say, But Yehoshiva, the daughter of King Yoram, the sister of Akaziah, took Yoash, the son of Akaziah, and stole him away from among the princes who were being slaughtered. She took him and his nurse, sequestered them in a bedroom, and hid them from Atalia so that he was not killed. Okay, so this what some of y'all read in your KJV is Athaliah. She was a wicked woman, and she was out to destroy the king's household. But we got this nurse who took this young child and hid him, hid him away when he was just a babe. So Atalia, or what you call Athaliah, she didn't find him. He was hidden. And she didn't destroy him. But she sure destroyed everything else of the king's house. So 2 Kings 11 and 3 goes on. And it says, he remained hidden with his nurse in the house of Yahweh for six years. During this time, Atalia ruled the land. Now remember, Atalia, she's a wicked woman. She went out to destroy the king's palace. But Yahweh moved on a nurse to spare that child so that the nation would have a king that would do right. And would not commit treason against the word. But Atalia, she committed treason against the word. And she's going to be the one hollering treason here in just a few minutes. So reading on, it goes on to say about Atalia. It says, in the seventh year of Jehoiada, 
summoned the captains of a hundred men platoons of both the Kari and the guard. He brought them into the house of Yahweh, made an agreement with them, and had them swear to it in the house of Yahweh. Then he showed them the king's son. All right. The king's son was revealed to some of the people. And he, and he gave them this instruction. Here is what you are to do of you who come on duty on Shabbat, a third of the guards of the royal palace. In other words, they did, they spared life. It's good to do good on Shabbat. They wanted to spare the life of a child who was royalty. And they guarded that child who was really a king on Shabbat. This is what this, this verse is saying. It says, a third is at the sur gate and a third is at the gate behind the guards. The first third is to continue guarding the palace and serve as a barrier. While the other two groups of you who come on duty on Shabbat will guard the house of Yahweh where the king is. Now remember, the king, that young boy who was technically a king was hidden in the house of Yahweh and they were to guard him. Every day, including Shabbat. It's good to do good on Shabbat. It goes on saying, You are to surround the king, each man with his weapons in his hand. Anyone who penetrates the ranks is to be killed. Stay with the king. This is their instructions. These were the instructions. The captains over hundreds did exactly as Jehoiada the Kohen, or the high priest, ordered. Each took his men, those coming on duty on Shabbat and those going off duty on Shabbat, and came to Jehoiada the Kohen. The Kohen issued to the captains of hundreds the spears and the shields that had been King David's and were kept in the house of Yahweh. Just think about it. They had King David's weapons to protect the young child king. Reading on. I'm reading in 2 Kings 11.11 11 now. The guards then took positions, each man with his weapons in his hand, from the right side of the house to the left side of the house, alongside the altar, alongside the exterior of the house, and around the king. Then he brought out the king's son, crowned him. This is a child. He's crowning. Gave him a copy of the testimony of the law, and thus made him king. And they anointed him, clapped their hands, and shouted, Long live the king! When Ataliah, or some of you say Athaliah, heard the shouting of the guard and the people, she entered the house of Yahweh where the people were, looked and saw the king, here's this child with a crown on his head now, saw the king standing there on the platform in keeping with the rule with the leaders and trumpeteers next to the king, and all the people of the land were celebrating and blowing their trumpets. At this, Atalia tore her clothes and cried, Treason! Treason! Here they are. They're honoring the righteous and dishonoring the unrighteous, even though this righteous is just a young child. Yahweh chose that, hid that child had a nurse hide that child. That nurse did righteously for the word of Yahweh, for what was righteous. She did it secretly. Secretly. You that know to do good and don't do it, to you it's sin. You who don't stand for righteousness and you secretly are scared, you're afraid, I encourage you to Hold not your peace, as Eric Stackelbeck says. Hold, and this is what the word says. Yahweh told the prophet, hold not your peace. Speak the truth. Speak the truth, American woman. Speak the truth, leaders. Speak the truth. Speak the truth. And she, Atalia, this wicked woman, she's hollering treason, treason when she herself committed treason against the word of Yahweh. Wow. 
Yehoida, the Kohen, ordered the captains of the hundreds. The army officers escort her, out, escort her out past the ranks of guards, but anyone who follows her kill with the sword. For the Kohen had said she must, she must not, she must not be put to death in the house of Yahweh. They didn't want her dying in the house of Yahweh. They wanted to hurt, get her out of there. So they took her by force and led her through the horse's entry to the royal palace, and there she was put to death. Jehoiada made a covenant between Yahweh, the king, and the people, that they would be Yahweh's people, and a covenant between the king and the people. Now, that king is that little boy. It goes on to read, Then all the people of the land went to the house of Baal and broke it down. The people did this. The people weren't going to be treasonous against Yahweh. They're going to break down the idols. They completely smashed its altars and images and killed Matan, the priest of Baal, in front of the altars. Next, the Kohen appointed officers over the house of Yahweh. This is what happened. It says Yoash was seven years old. Some people, y'all say, uh, Jehoash. Yoash was Yehoash was seven years old when he began to reign. Now some of you are saying, how can a seven year old reign? Well, he had a good instructor. He had the Kohen Gadol, the high priest, teach him the word of Yahweh, instruct him. Going on, Second Kings uh, chapter twelve verse three says, Yoash did what was right from Yahweh's perspective throughout the lifetime of Yehoiada the Kohen, who instructed him. Who instructs you, ladies? The word of Yahweh or your favorite television? Excuse me, or your favorite television program? Character. <laughs> Think about it. Who instructs you, ladies? Who instructs you to instruct your children? Nevertheless, the high places were not taken away. The people still sacrificed and presented offerings on the high places. Let me present a point here. The high places weren't torn down. Even though there was a leader, the Kohen Gadol was teaching this child, teaching him righteousness. That doesn't mean all the people are going to do right. Leaders can teach the right way. But all the people are not necessarily going to do what the righteous leader says. Why? Because we all have a free will to do what we want. Nevertheless, the leaders of any nation should fear and obey the almighty Yahweh, crying out to him and teach the people to do the same. Teach the people to do the same, not not uh, teach your, teach the people some foreign deity, some idol other than Yahweh. Nevertheless, it says the high places were not taken away, and the people still sacrificed, sacrificed and presented offerings on the high places. You ever looked up this word high places? High places is the Hebrew word Bama. It's a high place or a ridge, just like it says. It's in a mountain or a high place where sacrifices were offered. Yeah. Sacrifices to what? A foreign deity other than Yahweh. Great is the mystery of godliness. For God was manifest in flesh. Who's God? Yahweh. That's your first commandment. I am Yahweh, your God. You shall have no other gods before me. Well, his name was different in the New Blood Covenant. His name was Shua or, or J, Jesus. Well, may I please explain to you. There were several men in the First Blood Covenant who had the common name of Yeshua. Certainly did. And the scriptures teach, the New Blood Covenant teaches, the writings teach, that that child born of a virgin was given the name above all names, his father's name, Yahweh. He was Yahweh Mashiach, one name into all nations. Treason can go in all kinds of ways. We can conspire against Yahweh ignorantly, and I encourage you to seek him while he might still be found. Is this the United States of America's last chance? 
You can serve the God of your choice. Choose wisely. Until next time, shalom.